Hey there, it's Rob from Auburn Amps and QB Amps, and today I want to talk about output transformers. This guy. Uh, this is the device that couples the signal from the output tubes of a tube guitar amp to the speakers. This doesn't get discussed a lot because uh, people generally don't upgrade them. They replace them when they burn out. There aren't a lot of upgrade options and they're expensive and they're kind of misunderstood. So we are going to try to shed some light on the interaction between the speaker and the output tubes and the important role that the output transformer plays in that. Well, first let's talk about what a transformer is. It's basically just two coils of wire on an iron form. And, and so it couples the signals from the primary of the transformer, which is what the tube or tubes are connected to, the output tubes, and the, um, the speaker, which goes, or speakers, which go to the secondary. Now, uh, an output transformer generally has a specification of, well, for an example, a primary of 8,000 ohms and a secondary of 8 ohms. Uh, it would be more realistic to say that that transformer had an impedance ratio of 1,000 to 1, 8,000 to 8, 1,000 to 1. Um, the impedance ratio uh, just means that the load that you connect to the secondary of the output transformer is reflected back to the tubes. It doesn't go the other way. It's not that the output tubes have a fixed plate impedance that is somehow uh, imposed on the speaker. It's the other way around. The speaker uh, is a load on the transformer that is seen by the output tubes via the impedance ratio of the output transformer. So you can think of it uh, as like a transmission. It's like a, a fluid coupled one speed transmission uh, or um, like a fixie bike. Think of a, a fixed gear bicycle where the, um, uh, the pedals are directly connected to the rear wheels. If you're pedaling up a hill, you feel that load in your legs, the driving force of the, of the hill. So the force, gravity, is reflected back to your legs by the gear ratio of the bike. And uh, the same thing when you're going downhill, it's much, much easier. So the, um, uh, that's the load, that's the speaker load, is the force on the wheels and your legs, think of those as being the, uh, the two plates that are feeling that changing load that's reflected back via the transmission, via the output transformer. Okay, oh, I should talk about the frequency response of the output transformers. Um, the coupling isn't perfect. The low frequencies are restricted by or limited by the the mass of the core, the amount of iron. And the high frequency response is limited by uh, the capacity. Parasitic capacitance between the coils will limit the high frequency response. Uh, the low frequency is an issue because uh, manufacturers are always trying to trade off costs for performance. So uh, to get down to 20 hertz you need a lot of iron. For a guitar, we don't care about 20 hertz. 80 is the low E on a guitar. So typically, uh, uh, the low frequency of a, a tube guitar amp output transformer might roll off at 60 hertz, say. On the high end, those parasitic capacitances won't kick in until, I don't know, 10, 12 kilohertz, typically. So that's far beyond what we care about for an electric guitar. Okay, so we've established that the output transformer reflects the speaker load back to the output tubes. Well, we also know that output tubes can operate into a range of loads. They will make power uh, into a range of loads, uh, over two to one ratio of impedances, really. That's why you can get away with changing tubes in an amp, tube rolling the output tubes, and you get some degree of performance. It's not really telling you the whole story, and we'll, we'll see why right here. Uh, the way tubes react to changing impedance is really interesting. Now here is power on the uh, y-axis and impedance on the x-axis. So uh, the heavier load, a lower impedance is on the left here and a high impedance, a lighter load on the tubes is on the right. So this is the power that those tubes will make over a changing impedance. So this is a broad hump and at the peak the maximum power is derived. Now where it gets interesting is we look at the total harmonic distortion curve on the same graph. We see 
that it has a minimum, and the minimum doesn't line up necessarily with the maximum power. And uh, at low loads, at light loads on the output tubes, we have higher distortion. And on heavy loads of the output tubes, we see uh, a higher distortion again. But what is that that we're looking at? That's total harmonic distortion. That is a composite of different harmonics. The most prominent being the second harmonic and the third harmonic. The second harmonic is octave. You can think of it that way. Third harmonic is an octave and fifth. Uh, even order harmonics, like the second, tend to be canceled in a push-pull tube guitar amp, so uh, the third is more of interest to us. So let's separate those two out. Here's the second harmonic. It is at a higher level on a heavier load on the output tubes, and then it drops off as the load lightens, as the impedance gets larger, in other words. Now the third harmonic, which is uh, a more challenging type of distortion, is the opposite. It's fairly low when and, and doesn't increase when the load is heavier on the output tubes. But as we lighten the load on the output tubes with a higher impedance, we see that third harmonic distortion creep up. And that is an issue. Because if you're playing jazz, for example, or anything where you've got a complex chords, so you don't want ghost notes creeping in, then that third harmonic and any of the odd order harmonics are, uh, are a problem. So if you want to minimize third harmonic distortion, you might choose when you're designing an amplifier to present the output tubes with an impedance that is not where they make their maximum power. You might want to sacrifice a little bit of power in order to minimize distortion. But this is assuming that the speakers are presenting a constant load to the output tubes via the transformer. But that isn't what happens, because an 8-ohm speaker is not a pure 8-ohm load. This is a, a graph that you've probably seen on all kinds of speaker specs. This is speaker impedance versus frequency. So you have this big peak at the speaker resonant frequency, and then the frequency goes out something like this. This is quite typical and uh, we'll draw a line and pretend that's straight and this will represent a pure 8 ohm resistance. As you can see, the speaker only has an impedance of 8 ohms at three places. Every other frequency that's being reproduced by that speaker, it is operating at a different impedance. And, as we've seen, that changed impedance is reflected back to the output tubes. So that's why the output transformer is such an important part of the sound of a tube guitar amplifier. It's got nothing to do with paper or varnish or anything. It's the fixed impedance ratio that reflects the changing load from the speaker to the output tubes, which will then uh, respond uh, according to the tube's characteristic. And that's also why when you tube roll with output tubes, you're not really comparing apples to apples because uh, each tube type has uh, a different set of characteristics. Their power output and distortion characteristics uh, will change according to load differently. That impedance ratio is not something you can measure with a meter on the output transformer. The impedance ratio is the square of the turns ratio. Uh, in other words, let's say you have a, an output transformer with 1500 turns of wire on the primary and 50 on the secondary. So you have a 30 to 1 ratio between uh, primary and sec secondary. Um, if you square that 30 times 30, you have 900. That means you have an impedance ratio in that transformer of 900 to 1. So if you put an 8 ohm load on the secondary of that transformer, uh, 900 times 8 is 7200, so 7200 ohms is the load that would be seen by those tubes. If you have an unknown output transformer and you want to know what its impedance ratio is, well, you, as I've said, you can't measure it with a meter, and you can't even check the DC resistance and get a ratio that way because they tend to use different uh, wire gauges with different uh, lineal resistances for primary and secondary. So the best way to test it is to apply a signal to one end or the other, 
uh, it's easier to apply a signal to the secondary, measure that AC voltage that you're applying, and, uh, and then measure the voltage on the primary. And the ratio of those voltages will give you the turns ratio of the, um, of the transformer. And you square that and you end up with the impedance ratio. And there you'll have it. I said that the output transformer is like a fluid coupled transmission because there's no direct connection, no direct electrical connection between primary and secondary. It's uh, electromagnetically coupled. So really fast changes on one aren't seen by the other. That's that high frequency response roll off that we, that we talked about. Also, you can't put an infinite amount of power through an output transformer. The core gets saturated. It can no longer uh, efficiently transfer power from primary to secondary. The excess power just turns into heat. And if there's too much heat, then the thing just burns up. So that's it for output transformers. If you've got any comments, feel free to add them below, especially if they are um, uh, based on uh, some other information you've heard that might have contradicted something I've said. I would really like to uh, get a discussion going and try to eliminate some of the myths that tend to circle around guitar amplifier technology. Uh, there are a lot of them out there, and the more light we can shine on the, the truth about the electronics behind these things, the easier it is for everyone just to get down to the, uh, the work of making music and the joy of making music. And that's what this is all about. So anyways, it's Rob from uh, QB and Auburn Amplifiers wishing you a day full of music.